Good morning, Associate Dean McLaughlin, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty and alumni, proud parents, family members, friends, and honored graduates. I would like to thank Dean Magoo, Associate Dean McLaughlin, and the members of the Board of Trustees for allowing me the honor of addressing the Appalachian School of Law graduating class of 2014. I stand before you today, not only a longtime member of the legal profession that you all seek to enter, but a very proud parent. This opportunity is rich in meaning, so I will try in my brief time before you to impart my appreciation for the privilege of being able to participate for almost 30 years in this great profession, and perhaps leave you and my daughter who sits among you with some motherly advice on how to survive and thrive on this amazing path. The first lesson is in order to move forward, you must never forget where you started. To the family that has nurtured you, you owe a debt you can never repay. The odd thing is that they do not expect you to. What your family wants in return is most likely what you want for yourself. That you take this education they have toiled to provide and make something of yourself. But what does that mean, practically speaking? And how does one take seven years of higher education and fashion it into a primer for living in the real world? Many of you, as you sit here today, may believe you already know what it means to be independent and self-reliant, that you have lived away from the nest for so long that you are the one responsible for plowing the ground that you now stand on. And while you may be right in many respects, it does you no dishonor to look to the people who have loved and supported you, emotionally, financially, or both, and acknowledge their part in fashioning the person whom you have become. The imprint of the love and caring of your family is a mark you will bear all of your days. It forms the bedrock upon which the rest of your life will be built. The things that you were taught as a child, be polite, respect others, do your best, share what you have, fight fairly, never cheat to win, are lessons as germane to the practice of law as they were to your life growing up. Refer to these gifts often. Use them as a touchstone when you are faced with difficult choices or complex decisions. How do I know you were taught these things? You could not have made it this far or chosen a path this demanding if you were not raised with similar ideals. While the world you are about to enter may seem to have different rules, make no mistake about it. The values and standards you were raised with will define how you are perceived in that world. Their influence over you is enduring, and something you should feel proud to take with you as you enter this next stage of life. The second lesson is to acknowledge the efforts of the people who have given their life's work to educate you. To the teachers who have dedicated their careers to ensure that you will become a good lawyer, and to the school that has been central to that effort, you owe a debt that cannot be repaid. But they too seek what you strive for as you move forward. We hear many complain that law school cannot teach you everything you need to know about the practice of law. I will tell you that that is true. It is not a coincidence that we call the legal profession a practice, as that is the only way to learn to be a lawyer, to practice. The indispensable things that you have been taught are how to find the law, think, write, and express yourself like a lawyer, to be an effective advocate for those depending on your skills, to be ethical, honest and to live up to not just the letter, but the spirit of what you have learned for these last three years. Taking the information, the methods, and the training that your professors have toiled to impart to you, internalizing the mission statement of this law school, and bringing these to bear as you exert the influence all lawyers have on their environment will help you become successful in your professional lives. What you have learned is how you practice law. The experience you will gain is where you become a lawyer. You have been taught by the men and women of this institution that the legal profession is important and how you influence the law as you move through your career makes a difference. Perhaps the difference may be limited in scope or geography, but it will remain your legacy to a greater body of work that may endure long past your lifetime. And it can change the world. Make no mistake about it, lawyers do shape the world. Of the 55 delegates who made up the Constitutional Convention that formulated the document you will swear to uphold in a few short months, 35 of them were lawyers. Recently, the State Department reached out to the judges of Louisiana to go to Cyprus to assist their emerging governments to formulate their new court system. 
After the Iron Curtain fell and the Soviet Union was decentralized, judges from Russia visited American judicial districts and met with American judges to help deepen their understanding of how the democratic process functions through our system of justice. These opportunities to reach out to a wider audience are just a handful of examples of how lawyers impact the future and can change the social or political landscape on a global scale. What we do is important. It matters to more than just your client, and it is critical that you be guided in all things you accomplish professionally by the qualities of excellence in your work, excellence in your work, and dignity in your performance. The consequences may reach further than you can imagine. The last two lessons I have to impart are related. The first is that you will bring who you are to everything you do in the future. I have been a lawyer for almost 30 years and a sitting judge for over 20 of those, and I can tell you that when deciding a case of controversy, I act in accordance with my character and qualities as a person as much as I exercise my abilities as an attorney. And unfortunately, even the best player can be sidelined by weakness. It is perhaps more important to uncover and acknowledge those areas than it is to enjoy only what you may accomplish when playing to your strengths. If you're going to be a good lawyer, and more importantly, do a good job for your client, you must understand how it is you work best, and then do what you can to augment those things you enjoy doing the least. This is where your ability to innovate may be served by the world of technology in which you have been raised. Video, FaceTime conferencing, electronic filing, online research tools, email communication, the virtual office, all of these tools can be put to use to make the way you do your job conform more closely with how you want your practice to function. Be realistic about what can be accomplished in a day and never hesitate to ask someone older or smarter than you for help. Not only may they be able to lead you in the right direction, saving you time and effort, but you will work a lot smarter if you seek advice first. Avoid the habit of trying to fix problems after they, their problems, because I'm here to tell you some are unfixable. Not all lawyers are suited for all activities in the law, and figuring out what you do best and learning what to delegate will lead you to a more productive professional career. The other thing you must do is find some balance between your work life and your real life. The old saying goes that at the end of the day, you will never wish you had spent more time at the office. While it is true that your client's business is your priority while you are at work, you will not be as focused on that work if you do not give your private life the attention it deserves. Work smart during your work hours so that you can be present to your home life. If you want to know how important the other roles you will play in life really are, look around you. All of you are the product of years of attention from parents, grandparents, teachers, coaches, mentors, and friends, just to name a fraction of the village that has helped to bring you to this moment. Remember their contributions. Return them in kind when it's your turn to parent, coach, or mentor. This is how you directly impact the future, and you are exactly the kind of people we want bringing influence to bear on the generations that will come behind you. You have been trained to think logically, to weigh both sides of an argument, to mediate disputes to a fair resolution, and to do it all with dignity, respect, and honesty. The world at large benefits from your involvement because the skills you hone in your legal career make you uniquely qualified to bring good judgment and fair-mindedness to every situation you encounter, be it on the ball field or at your family's kitchen table. Tolerance and understanding will thrive in the environment made possible by the way you view a situation. Being a good lawyer should become interwoven with your continual efforts to be a good person, to affect positive change in the world around you, and to bring fairness and a just outcome to every problem. If you exemplify these qualities in all areas of your life, you will find satisfaction in your tangible and intangible achievements, personal as well as professional. If you remember nothing else from the words I have spoken to you today, I hope you will remember this, that the diploma you will hold very shortly in your hands is not just a means to an end. It is not an automatic ticket to the good life or a guarantee that you will own a Porsche and a condo before you're 40. It does not confer with it happiness or prosperity. It will not protect you from adversity or the challenges you will face in your life to come. It is, however, a powerful tool, and it can be in the right hands a magnificent force for positive change. 
It is all in how you wield it. So here are a few words of caution. When you raise your hand to take your oath, it will be to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States. And you will become at that moment a sworn officer of the court. While your duty to maintain your client's confidence and be honest in the manner in which you administer their cause of action is your paramount responsibility in your relationship with them, your higher duty will always be to the legal system. And you must never forget that as an officer of the court, you are required to be truthful and ethical in all of your dealings before the bar. It can take a lifetime to build a good reputation, but only moments to destroy it. How you are perceived as an attorney by your brothers and sisters in the law will affect your feelings of self-worth more than you can understand as you sit here today. And I can tell you that the capital you have built with other lawyers, if you treat them fairly, can make all the difference in a career that may span decades. You will come across your contemporaries for years to come. If you have maintained a reputation for being courteous, fair, and truthful, you will find that the path you tread may not be so difficult. You can earn the respect of your clients, fellows of the law, and members of the judiciary by the way you conduct yourself. And all of these combined relationships will mean the difference between a career that is marked by a sense of fulfillment or one that you may find will leave you empty and disparaged. I know many of you are thinking this is a lot to take in. I know others of you are thinking, when does the party start? <laughs> so I will leave you with one last thought. Lawyers are men and women of action, and we hold a special place in society. We must endeavor in everything we do to uphold the trust that people place in us when they seek our guidance, and never forget our obligation to the system of justice that forms the basis of this great country we are so blessed to live in. You are privileged to be a part of a great profession, and we stand here today in recognition of your accomplishment and wish you well in all of your future endeavors. As you leave this campus today, some of you for the last time, remember the words of Adelaide Stevenson, when you leave here, never forget why you came. If you will indulge me for a few more moments, I have one last remark. To our daughter, Diana, you have brought us happiness and love your entire life. If that was not enough, today you make your dad and I immeasurably proud of all you have overcome and accomplished. From a heart that is bursting with joy, I wish for you only the best that life has to offer in the years to come. You are an amazing woman, along with your amazing classmates. May the rest of your journey be filled with the love you deserve and the success you have all earned. Congratulations to you all. You have worked hard to arrive at this moment. Thank you for allowing me to share it with you.